Hi all, this is a quick project update with some questions for our friends in the geology and hydrology uh, fields on our project. On screen now we have the U.S.-Mexico border, Laguna Salada, the Salton Sea back in 1984. This is present day where things are drier and a lot of the salt is accumulating on the Baja Peninsula. Back in the 84 flood things were far wetter and we can use the recession of this flood as a water level to find low areas. This would be a good place for our return canal. Zooming into street view on many of the lines that are visible from the overhead view, we can see that the Graben uh, is subsiding and all these lines are translations through thousands of feet of silts and sands and you can see that these are not roads or other such things but actually the result of liquefaction small grain material moving up through the coarser grain material in an earthquake due to seismic shaking etc um, along the road you can see that in recent days they've taken out the oh three to four foot diameter steel um, casings and put in actual concrete sort of um, culverts uh, to increase the ability to absorb floodwaters. But all of these, this is a fault line going up here. Uh, there's fault lines on either side, but these circular formations um, are probably more significant to liquefaction events. Small local faults can produce 5.0s or greater. 5.0s can cause liquefaction. Over on the Sierra Prieta fault, 7.0s are possible and 6 and 7s happen frequently. When you have a 6 or 7 earthquake occur on the Sierra Prieta quake, several kilometers down with the North American plate on one side and silts and sands on the other, it's going to move through the silts and sands and may cause a system of nodes and anti-nodes to develop, causing those circular formations. 7.2 occurred on the Laguna Salada Fault as well um, back in 1892. But anyways, you can see the formation here of the Kenyatta David Fault, which is just south of the Laguna Salada Fault, and you can see that the depth is 1.5 to 2.5 kilometers in depth, depending on where you're at. You're going to have thousands of feet of wet silts and sands for seismic energy to travel through anywhere in this area. The flashing black line on screen now is a flood barrier that was produced quite a while ago, and the basically Fish Camp Road, uh, which was produced in the 1990s. Obviously, the Sierra Prieta Fault has something to do with the depths of the water and the tidal regime that exists uh, in the northern gulf. Basically, water wants to come in along the eastern side and go out the western side, and this actually produces a flow of sediments, fine-grained sediments, which moves to the west. Um, this also has to do with salinity. Obviously, less saline water moves in to the east and more saline back out to the west, affecting salinity levels in the northern gulf and the highly prized environmentally protected areas for the Vaquita and the Totuaba. References to the increased salinity affecting the food sources for the Totuaba and Vaquita have been referenced in multiple papers. Please remember that a bit over a uh, hundred years ago, 16.5 million acre feet of fresh water was flowing into the estuary and Obviously, brackish water occurred and tidal bores and other such things. But the salinity level in the protected area was approximately half of what it is today. The black line crossing the southern tip of Montague Island is imaginary, but indicates where larger tides back up and push west. On the east side, we can see where essentially a longshore modeling type 
uh, event occurs along this shoreline and stops as you move north. Looking at the west, we can see that this is approximately the area where um, higher tidewaters push west onto the peninsula. Looking at Fish Camp Road, uh, this is 1987 or so. It appears Fish Camp Road was constructed in about 1990. And we can see that the tide, you know, generally blows in. Here's where you can start to see Fish Camp Road appear on screen. And this is like 1992. And we can see that Fish Camp Road makes an effective barrier until it gets overtopped. Um, for the last, oh, since the 2010 earthquake, um, Fish Camp Road has been largely impassable. You can zoom in and see where there are multiple locations where it's been overtopped and eroded. Looking at it at ground level, you can, in the far distance, see where salt has been deposited on either side of the road. I believe the image for this article was taken from the opposite direction, so this would be looking from east to west. So in February 2020, the government, federal government came in with a grading blade and I believe simply just filled in the holes caused by uh, tidal inundation. In this region of the world, subsidence and sea level rise combined to make a net change in the relationship between sea level and land surface area of about 1 to 1 1.5 centimeters per year. While this rate of change is likely to remain linear, punctuated by earthquakes and other such events, the volume of water transported onto and off of the Baja Peninsula and into and out of the estuary will go up exponentially. A quick Google flight from uh, 2004 shows where the tide waters come and where they end up blowing through at this time period. In 2014, the 2010 quake caused significant subsidence and more troubles for this endangered roadway. Using the title charts for El Golfo de Santa Clara for March 2020, we can look at how endangered this road is. When the tidal coefficient exceeds 100, you get tides of 6 plus meters that back up south of Montague Island and flow onto the peninsula. And yes, the spring tides of March, and this is April, and May are higher than those in June. Here's May, and you can see that tidal coefficients diminish as you go into the hottest, driest part of the year, and essentially large areas of the floodplain dry out in June, July, August, during the monsoon. The areas flooded in the 1984 flood roughly define our playing field. Um, the Landsat image shows the entirety of the flooded area along with the sandbar. This is a depositional sandbar along the Baja coast. Evaporation from this area is vast, about 8 lineal feet per unit area per year. Evaporating from this area, moving through the low desert and up onto the Colorado Plateau where it falls as rain. The gigawatts of power required to evaporate such vast amounts of water in this region are about equivalent to all current green energy sources, including dams, hydrothermal, solar and wind produced in the United States. In this region and environment, dredges, modern dredges like this, can move 430 cubic yards an hour. They can be delivered to the job site on the back of a singular truck. And the cost of dredging is only a, is less than a dollar a cubic yard. At present, we seek sage advice for a project that will affect an entire ecosystem extending from the southern portion of the Gulf of California all the way up through the Colorado River Basin and maybe beyond. Is it possible to engineer a partial thermohaline type cycle using the massive tidal flux north of Montague Island to quantify salinity and temperature so water leaving our system will sink into the far deeper basins to the south. 
and east. Without such a system, salt will tend to continue to accumulate in the northern Gulf region. The region is called the Salton Basin for a reason. If we look at what used to be estuary area that used to be green and actually have bushes, trees, whatever, um, back in 2004, look at the salt that's now accumulated in the southern portion of the estuary. This is deadly. If we utilize the massive tidal flux north of Montague Island in the Skinny Channel, where it's doubled in amplitude from the previous tides I've showed you, up to 12 meters with 3 meters a second of velocity, if we use that to push a circulation system back down into the deeper channels, we may have something. The entire floodplain is flat and low-lying and subsiding. If we use the existing tidal energy and circulation pattern to possibly induce a thermohaline cycle, we may have sufficient energy to flood Laguna Salada and make a circulation system that's good for the environment, the economy, transportation, and water availability in the desert southwest region and the Colorado River itself the increased amount of water will likely pay for the project. Please let me know your thoughts. Is there a fatal flaw? Where is it at? I look forward to speaking with all of you. Thank you.